been putting off making this video for a couple of years now. And the dogs want me to put it off for a little more. Why I started eating fish again. As you guys know, some of you may have been following me this whole journey. This YouTube channel started as my vegan experiment. I went on a mission to try and be the most eco-friendly version of myself, and part of that, after watching Cowspiracy, was to minimize how much meat and dairy I ate. As a scientist, I wanted to create a fair experiment, meaning I would fully commit to being vegan for a year and then see how my body, mind, and ethos changed in that time. Lo and behold, if you watch any of my old videos within a month, my IBS symptoms were gone, I was sleeping better than ever, my skin had cleared up, I lost some weight. Not that I needed to lose weight, but I just felt I was at my optimal, most healthy, amazing kind of position in my life. This was back in 2016. Now since then, I went vegan. I started trying to educate people on how to be vegan. My mother and grandmother both went vegan. My grandmother's arthritis went away after many years. My mom's health got so much better. So many people around me tried the vegan lifestyle and honestly, thrived. Now I know it's not a vegan lifestyle. It's the whole ethos commitment to being a better person for the animals and the planet. Veganism is so far beyond anything I thought it was when I originally set out on this journey. And to be completely real with you, it felt a little extreme. I still own leather boots that I bought secondhand as I thought that was a more eco-friendly option than buying new plastic shoes which would then disintegrate into landfills. The couches at my house are leather because they're simply so much easier to clean and we've had them for years. I didn't want to exclude people, be militant, or be part of that whole uh, laughed at community of vegans. I understood why they stood in front of the meat aisle and the dairy aisle saying dairy is murder. I know, and it's awful, and it's painful that we treat animals in such a way. But it was not sustainable for me. In my head, sustainability is something that we can do long term for the rest of our lives. And veganism was not it. I preferred to go by the term plant-based from the start as it would be less scary and vegans wouldn't necessarily feel the need to ostracize me from the very start if I did do something wrong like have a non-cruelty free product that I was still finishing using or still own some leather. I respect every single person who is a vegan and who's doing these incredible things for our planet. It is objectively the right thing to do, morally, ethically, environmentally but it just didn't work for me. And I gotta tell you why. So this is my body. I currently weigh 65 kilograms. I'm pretty healthy, fit. I free dive, scuba dive, go on runs, lift weights. However, when I lived in Africa, after six months of living there and eating vegan, I ate a lot of beans and rice and mataba and all the fruits and vegetables I could. I lost weight. I weighed about 57 kilos and I started looking sick and I started feeling sick. It was a joke amongst us diving instructors that we would lose weight and then in the summer months when we weren't diving we would have to bulk up to come back to Africa and lose weight again. My work colleagues over there also lost multiple kilos but my percentage of my body weight that I lost and how weak I started feeling, I knew I had to do something. And I ate a fish. I ate a fish that was locally caught on a line right in the marine park where I worked. And I had to keep eating fish for the next couple months so my weight didn't just decrease more and more and more towards a very unhealthy weight. I told myself, this is temporary. This is just while I'm living in Africa. I have to eat additional proteins to just make sure my body's healthy. There wasn't a supermarket there. It, we don't have the same amount of resources in some of these places around the world. And that's kind of what started changing my mind on veganism. If you are someone who has the privilege to live in a Western world country where we can carefully pick and eat and choose exactly what we want to eat and how we want to get it, then that's fantastic. You should do that. You should minimize the amount of meat you eat. You should, but in places like this, where all the food you eat is off your land, where the carbon footprint of eating a fish from the ocean right there 
is so much smaller than trying to import tofu from who knows where or other plant-based sources of protein. It's just not the same. The same thing, when I was living in Cambodia, the people there would eat snails and eggs and anything they could get their hands on because that's all the options they had. I started seeing that veganism was such a black and white painted paintbrush where in a lot of ways it did not consider other cultures and people in this world who don't live like we do. I was privileged to be able to go to Africa and live in the Comoros for eight months and live amongst these beautiful, vibrant, kind human beings. I learned about the value of song and talking and got to move away from my addiction to my phone and needing to depend on electricity. We didn't even have electricity 24 hours a day. And yeah, that's why I think being plant-based is a slightly better term. It's not as demonized and ostracized as doing veganism wrong, but you're still decreasing the amount of animal products you're surrounding your life with. I understand if this is disappointing or if I've let you down in some way, but I wanted to be honest with you. Part of the reason I did disappear off YouTube for a while is because the name there was still Vegan Cat uh, in my vegan experiment, and I felt like a fraud and a failure. I felt like all the people who looked up to me or may have become vegan because of me were there angry and judging, and if that's the case, I'm sorry. I had to choose what was best for my health, and I had to use the real life experiences of what I learned in our world to make informed decisions. But this applies to you too. It is all of our responsibility as members of this planet and as ocean lovers, as people who care about our earth, to make informed decisions every single day, to try and minimize our carbon for footprint, to try and minimize our water footprint, to try and make the best choices we can make for ourselves and our planet. But it's not going to help anyone to demonize others. You're never going to make more people vegan by being angry at them or yelling at them. The best thing you can do is lead by example and to consume as little animal products and have as few animal products in your environment, in your world, as you can. So you have to do what's right for you. I urge you be a conscious consumer, make decisions while thinking about the impacts, while thinking about where it's going to end up, whether it's the landfill, can it be recycled, can you buy it secondhand? If you're buying food, can you grow it yourself? Do you have that ability? I just got a place where I can get a garden. I'm so excited to be able to grow food there. I don't want this channel to be a place of blaming or demonization. And after all these years, I made the choice to be honest, open up to you guys, and hope you understand this is my journey and this is the journey I've been on to encourage you to be on the most sustainable and healthy journey for yourself. Eating plant-based 90% of the time is better than eating it never or than eating it 50% of the time. Every choice you make, you can choose to be eco-friendly, ocean-friendly. So let's just work towards making more of those choices in the positive. Don't demonize yourself if you go down the wrong path for a little bit. It's our life and guilt and fear and negativity is not going to help anyone. I try and minimize my carbon footprint in every way I can, like my recent series of decarbonizing scuba diving and diving. So check out my videos on how I'm trying to minimize the amount of fuel we use by getting a sailboat or how to buy dive equipment that doesn't kill our reef because there is so much more to being eco-friendly than what we put in our mouth.